Oh man, is Troy getting used? And Sam finds out about Gabe's massive money issues. We're talking all about it starting right now. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz After Buzzers, what is up? Thank you again for joining us for another episode of another Dear one. White People. <laughs> another one. I liked how you did that. <laughs> uh, we are talking about Volume 3, Chapter 4. And I'm your host, Benny Adams. Before we get into anything else, I want to introduce you to my amazing co-host. She is a huge fan of Dear White People. She's actually been on this panel since... Too many times. Yeah. <laughs> since the beginning. Since the beginning, Miss TK. Changes. What's up, guys? TK Trina in the house. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Are yeah. you ready? I think so. It's Let's a do lot. This. It's a lot to go through. But yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. Well, uh, so what, what did you think about this episode? Um, what I love about um this show and other shows on Netflix is that you know it's current issues, mm -hmm. but also sometimes it's like because you know like you watch like a, a comedy sitcom and they just deal with one issue and it's like I can you know I could do this while I'm cleaning like watch TV while I'm cleaning mm -hmm. with Dear White People like you can't do anything else else you'll miss right. all the little nuances exactly so I love the fact that they force you to just like either watch us or mm -hmm. don't watch us like you can't right. be an in between and then you you learn something from it so I mean I mean I'm a, I'm a fan of it yeah, I, I really like this episode, and going off of what you said, I really do like how they're they're putting all these important issues mm -hmm. that, you know, a lot of TV shows really aren't putting out there. Yeah. So I think that's really important. Um, I want to start off with uh, Troy and Pastige. Mm -hmm. So Troy, he writes this article, you know, he's feeling all good about it. And people are are warning him that, you know, he's being used mm -hmm. for um, his blackness, yeah. pretty much. A la Om Omarosa. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, you know what? I can't disagree with that. <laughs> I cannot disagree with that. Um, what did you think about that whole scenario when when Troy, you know, he's, he's disagreeing with it and then he finds out, you right. know? Oh, man, they did change my story. Yeah. Well, it's funny because now you're wondering how um, the relationship between Troy and Kirk goes goes back beyond mm -hmm. college. <clears throat> and, and you're really wondering if Kirk is really a friend or if Kirk is just like, okay, well, he's there. Like, you know how you have certain people in your life, they're just there. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, if, he, if Troy is there, great. If he's not there, like, I'm not going to be bothered by it. So um, I'm really wondering their the dynamics of their friendship and what they both think of each other mm -hmm. because i think troy actually thinks as uh, of kirk as a friend and kirk right. probably not so much <clears throat> so um that's questionable then it also begs a different to um a firm in the action i had a conversation with somebody yesterday and apparently like they thought that um, businesses get money for hiring minorities. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, is the government funding this? Because if it is, then it kind of doesn't align with the current government that we have. Right. And then if that's the case, then, you know, the affirmative action is still a big topic. Mm -hmm. So um, for Kirk to just not be... I don't even know if the right word is uh, empathetic, but understanding and know, because he mm -hmm. is a journalist and an uh, en uh, editor, Right. how do you not deep dive on this? Right, exactly. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, I don't know. It's it's just really questionable. Um, I'm really questioning their friendship. Do you think Troy is more of just uh, a quota to Pestige? Um, I call it the Oprah effect. The Oprah effect, Meaning okay. that um, he could be a quota, mm -hmm. but he's also um, the comfortable minority that you feel... Uh, safe around. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, I was talking to somebody I think the other day where it's just like um, if Oprah and Tyre Banks came at the same time, Tyre Banks wouldn't have never had a show. Oh, well, okay. Because, you know, Oprah, she, she, she's not Beyonce or Tyre Banks. Mm -hmm. So nobody's threatened by her looks per se. Right. At that time, she was heavier. Mm -hmm. So nobody's thinking that, they're, you know, she's going to steal their husband. Right. And then, you know, she was just a nice... 
black lady. Yeah. So now, you know, mainstream media, the Midwest, didn't mind her coming out at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Because she was safe. That's a good point. So it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, Troy Troy is safe. He speaks proper. Mm -hmm. You know, he wears the right clothes. Right. They don't think he's, you know, they don't think he's doing all this other stuff. And then he, 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 they can have conversations with him. And, you know, I I think if this is the real world, they probably might drop some N-words and he'd be Mm -hmm. okay with it. Yeah. Somewhat. I know what? I agree with that. Yeah. I completely agree with that. And I just feel like Troy just wants to be accepted. You know, I think he just, he wants to be able to hang out with black people, to hang out with white people, and just have it not be an issue. And I feel like it's always an issue because, well, people see it as an issue because he, you see him with just all white people. Right. A lot. And so I think... Well, I mean, he does still live in the black house. Right, right, he does. (laughs) The black house, which is funny. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, like I said, I think he just wants to be accepted, and I think he he just wants to have a normal life. Well, I mean, normal is relative, because you have to remember some of these these guys that he he grew up with. So Mm -hmm. he has that... It's it's one of those things where why I've heard why black parents send their kids to um, HBCUs. Mm -hmm. It's like their their child was more in a white environment, and they want them to accept experience you know different we're not a monolith so different variations of black Mm -hmm. whereas if you're around just one black white or whatever one place that look or one group that looks like you all the time then Mm -hmm. you can't interact with the other world other world so if you're living in a multicultural you know city like la new york miami Mm -hmm. whatever then and you can't interact with people that don't look like you, then that's a problem. Right. So Troy's at an advantage if he plans to work in an environment where there are people that don't look like him as well. Right. So it works for him. But again, um, I think he needs to really reassess who his friends are. Yeah. And if if he if they're just using him, mm-hmm. then you know you also have to play the game. Right. And that's the that's the big issue right mm-hmm. there. Um, something else I wanted to touch on real quick was uh, Troy's dad. <laughs> He is completely different from that season one guy we met. The Dean! You know? Wearing the jeans. Oh my gosh. The jeans. He was so happy about that. And so we find out that he has a little crush. Uh, a little crush. Mm-hmm. And Walter. What, yeah, what do you think about this this change in personality? Um, I think when Troy went through his issues last season, the the Dean realized that he has to let his son live his own life mm-hmm. um, because the pressure, it, it wasn't doing Troy. I think any type of pressure, because you get to a certain age and you're just like, I know what I want or I think I know what I want, and mm-hmm. you have to let people fall. Right. So I think he came to the, came to that realization. He's like, I have to let my son just live his life, and right. if he needs advice, um, you know, he'll come to me. Right. And the thing about really great parenting is that you might be, you might think that you're talking to a brick wall, mm-hmm. but they're actually listening to. Like my mom was always talking about cleaning my room, and now right. I haven't lived with my mom in years, and I clean my room. Like yeah. you know, the, every season I do like a deep clean. Like it's all mm-hmm. these little things that I saw my mom do, do or right. did that I avoided or try to duck out of that I am now doing because right. this is you know this is the stuff that she's taught me. They implant the seeds. They plant in the you. seeds. The really good parents plant the seeds and plant the right seeds right. so that you know when situations do arise you are prepared. Mm-hmm. So you have to rely on that I think Troy's dad realizes that I prepared my son to a point mm-hmm. and I have to let him live his life exactly and I love that I love that and uh something else that we love before we get into get on to any more we have a special announcement <laughs> that we want to tell you guys we have a special, a announcement, special people. announcement if you're watching <laughs> us on YouTube and you have it and you're not subscribed please hit that subscribe button we definitely want you to know when we're doing more episodes of Dear White People more episodes in general of Netflix shows of different shows of sports shows of TV shows of drama all that good stuff we have it all for you if you are not watching us on Netflix and you are listening to us on iTunes or Spotify definitely give us five stars we don't accept anything less and definitely leave all those comments we appreciate those comments read those comments and you know we appreciate you because without you guys we wouldn't be the ESPN of TV talk Better. So, so well said. Oh, thank so you. So well said. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's move <laughs> on to Gabe and Sam. Uh, Poor Gabe. Really? Literally. Well, mm. uh, uh, mm. he, he's having some money issues or his, his parents 
are having some money issues, and so he has to do something he's never really done. You know, he's working work, three jobs. Yeah, he's working, and you know what? It's so funny because. I was thinking a lot of college students, they do this. They yeah. work three jobs. Like, this isn't anything, like, abnormal. Yeah, it's – I much respect to people who just go to college because I didn't have that experience. I was on a full-ride scholarship mm-hmm. where I trained for six hours uh, in track and field, and then I um, also I, – I went to school. Mm-hmm. I didn't worry about the work thing. I didn't worry about getting my books. I right. didn't worry about all those little things. And then when I went back to school, I was like, oh – you have to stand it like it, it was definitely a different um, way of life. Definitely, I'm not on the ga- game side of things as far as financial, but mm-hmm. um, definitely s- shout out to those to, to the students that work three jobs, get through college, mm-hmm. and make it work because right. it's not easy. However, Gabe being in the filmmaker um, area. It's mm-hmm. an arts field. So when you move to Los Angeles or New York, wherever, you're going to have to fund this. <laughs> right. And if people don't come with funding, you're going to have to, what are you going to do? Well, Wait until they fund it or are you going to work and fund it yourself? Well, that brings up the important question because, you know, so many people, I know people who uh, whose parents support them. Mm-hmm. And th- throughout college. And so that makes me wonder, does he think or did he think that his parents were just still going to help him out once he got out of college? Maybe. Yeah. You never- but it seemed like, based off of what Sam said to him, because she didn't even know how rich he was. Mm-hmm. So based off of what Sam said to him, he was still humble about it. So yeah. he wasn't doing anything super crazy. Mm-hmm. So um, maybe he did, or maybe he thought, like, we all thought when we were finishing college that we were going to get that job or yeah. that project we want and that we were going to find our house on the hill and get the mm-hmm. white picket fence and drive the car and all this right. sort of stuff coming out of college, which is a total lie. Yeah, it is. <laughs> A complete lie. <laughs> complete lie. And I, I just, I so I really like how this is happening to Gabe because I feel as if if this if this didn't happen, he would have had this just completely wrong vision of right. what happens once he gets out of college. Yeah. And then all the great stories start uh, are come from rock bottom. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, so, everything does. Like, look at rappers and mm-hmm. look at like you know. Um, when I think of her, I think Eminem is like almost a prime example. Like, yes, or, um, oh my gosh, um, Amy Schumer is another one. Like, mm-hmm. yes, we want to see you happy, but right. you made the best content when you were right. not. And then, oh my gosh, what's the other girl? Oh, she's getting a divorce. She's a singer, too. Uh, she's um, Adele. Yeah. She's getting a divorce. So everybody's looking forward to her album because mm-hmm. the last one was off of a breakup. Right, right. So, I mean, yes, it's, all, un- yeah, exactly. it's unfortunate, mm-hmm. but not everybody could be Beyonce and just create out of nothing. Exactly. It's not, not everybody's Beyonce. The, Actually, nobody's Beyonce but the Beyonce. The best <laughs> stories come, like you said, the best stories come from when when you hit rock bottom mm-hmm. and when you, when you have that struggle. So it's it's good that he's going through that. Yeah. So now he gets a little taste. Yeah, and of it might be like. it might fund a new project or a new idea. So yeah, you never exactly. Know. Did uh, what did you think of Sam's reaction? Because he didn't tell he didn't tell Sam whatsoever right. about his problem. Well, I think it wasn't necessarily about the problem. It was the fact that well, what I, one question I did have is the fact that I think they were on and off for maybe this seems like two and a half years. Mm-hmm. I think the timeline is, and one she's never met his parents. Right. So, or she has, maybe, like, he has one parent that's not as, I I don't know the right words, I don't know, not as stringent. Mm -hmm. Because he makes it sound like he said they voted Republican. Right. So, no, definitely don't want to put Republicans in the box because they're definitely also, um, they're not a monolith as well. So, you don't know Mm -hmm. what type of Republican, quote, unquote, they are. But it doesn't seem like Sam met his parents. So, that's one thing. So, why hasn't he brought her home to meet his parents if he's so much in love with her? So, that's one thing. And then, um... I think she was more just surprised on how wealthy he is mm-hmm. and the fact that he doesn't talk about his his background. I think she finds it very like mysterious kind of. Yes, but I think those are the, like those are questions that maybe college is a little different. 
Um, because you you ask you start asking different questions when you can get out of college because co- college is like a buffer. Like you have to be um, within certain class of individuals, not class, but certain type of individual to be in college and to mm-hmm. last in college, and then to get a master's in college and yeah. be a TA. So you have to be a certain Spot type of, of individual. <laughs> so it's like you want to be asking all those little questions opposed to now you're in the real world and now somebody says they're like a banking investor, but something's not quite right. right. It's not clicking. <laughs> it's like it's not clicking. You're a bank investor, but you're never at work. Mm. Okay, <laughs> Tommy. So it's just like, I, I think she just didn't ask those questions because she didn't need to because she's in a safe zone. Right, right. And like we said in the previous after show, you know, they're in a completely different world mm-hmm. in, uh, in college. Mm-hmm. You know, once they get out of college, it's a brand new world. Oh, where yeah. You know, they have to ask those questions. Oh, for sure. Trust me, you do. (laughs) So many stories. But uh, moving on to, uh, I'm actually really excited about this storyline, Kelsey and Brooke. I I don't know why. I just really like Kelsey. You know, oh my her gosh, she's amazing. personality is so funny. And like we said in the previous after show, we're getting to see a little bit more of the minor characters mm-hmm. and their personalities. So it seems like Kelsey has a little crush on Brooke. Is it a crush, though? I think it's a crush. You don't think it's a crush? No, I think it's a convenience. Really? Yeah. Please explain. Well, there's a couple things. One, Kelsey, uh, at least half of her, I don't know if her, because again, we haven't um, uh, delved delved in, yeah, delved in or dived in into her background. So Mm -hmm. we know she comes from Westin background, but we don't know how how the makeup is, what both her parents were, did she, you know, all this other stuff. Right. Um, and in particular in the West Indian background, being uh, gay is not like they're people, men in particular still get like lynched in Jamaica. So, okay. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. So um, being gay is not necessarily something that is approved of in a lot of, a lot of Caribbean countries. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. Um, so it just, I would love to see her background as far as does her parents know? Um, if they do, are they, you know, have they been in the States for a long period of time? Like what the dynamic is with that? Mm-hmm. And then the matter of convenience, because uh, Kelsey did say that she ran through all the lesbians in her first year. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where if your options, you've run out on all your options, and those options are now boring and obsolete True, to you. True, and now she sees another challenge. A new toy. Yeah, yeah, you, that, you bring up a good point. Yeah, so I don't think it's, it's you know, she likes her. I think it's one of those things where, you know, you didn't notice that person, and that person does something nice for you, and then you mm-hmm. notice them, and you're like, oh. And then now you're applying this, you know, all this stuff onto this person, whereas in reality, you weren't even thinking about that person two weeks ago. Right. I think that's what Kelsey is going through. And, and why not? Like maybe that will calm Brooke down a little bit. Yeah. Or maybe to irritate them because they have very similar personalities. True. Well, and speaking of Brooke, what do you think about her whole journey, you know, just trying to find or her journey into um, with Kelsey? Um... I mean, Brooke is, we saw in, uh, what, what are we calling this, chapter three, or volume three? Yeah. I don't know, whatever it's, it is, episode three, we'll just go with episode three. What volume we saw, three, chapter four. Okay, so chapter <laughs> three, what we saw in chapter three, Brooke was also, you know, open with her sexuality. Mm-hmm. She has she has a rotation list, which is fine, you yeah. can do that. So, you know, and she said she was open to explore. Mm-hmm. I think this is um, where in more of a safer way. It's kind of one of those things where, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, again in the chat, in the 60s, that free love was allowed, yeah. and then it kind of clamped down on it in the 70s, 80s, 90s, yeah. 2000s, and now it seems like it's re-emerging again mm-hmm. um, with a lot more heads to it. So right. it's no longer, you know, guy, girl, there's like, you know, transgender, there's all these other variations. Right. And... Um, you are now, um, I think there's sexually fluid. Right. So I think Brooke is kind of on that spectrum where she's she's you know like in between like she's still she's very curious about it yeah yeah so i mean kudos to her why not and i really like how you know they're the writers are they have brooke on one side Mm -hmm. and then you have lino on another side you're seeing both of their stories on uh just trying to find the one or trying to find love or just being curious about love love, i don't think she's trying to find love but i think she's she's trying to find something i think she's not necessarily love but 
Uh, I think she's trying to find somebody who gets her. Yeah. And is that that, that friend who, who gets her. Mm-hmm. Like, I have a friend who gets me because we've been, like, we went to high school there. Her birthday was yesterday, so shout out to Flo. But she she just gets it. And mm-hmm. we all have to talk all the time. She just gets it. We have similar personalities. We have similar sense of humors. We're... we're th- three days apart as far as birthdays and so like she just gets it yeah and you know we pick each other up when you know it's, it's one of those things and i think maybe she's searching for somebody who just gets it i never thought about that but that's uh i like that yeah yeah because it's like yeah you can have sex like she she can get one off mm-hmm. but it's one of those things that is she really into her? right right if she gets if she has sex with one person and they get her entirely mm-hmm. and they can handle her personality I think that will work. But I don't think she'll find that in college. Right. That's and, for a more mature individual. And you know, you saying that makes me wonder, you know, I, do you think this is actually going to work out between Kelsey and Brooke? Um, It can go, What I mean, Brooke might, because Brooke also has that personality where it's, um, she goes overboard. Yeah. So maybe she might like Kelsey too much, and then Kelsey will have to push her away. That's true. Or maybe they'll try it and it doesn't work. Because mm-hmm. we don't really know what the storyline or the arc um, of their characters like maybe it's just a blip where they they just interact because they didn't really they weren't really interacting the, the uh, seasons before right so maybe they you know get intimate or they try to get intimate and they're like mm, no nah. not for me yeah. yeah yeah so or maybe you know they just have a fling for a season mm-hmm. so like we we never we never know right but we'll see yeah we will see um now it's time for our special segment Dear white people, Dear. it's where we talk about uh, stereotypes mm-hmm. that um, people have about black people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what do you have for us? Oh, it's hard. I really should have just went back on every season and like had a list, but that's right? really too much work. Um, I think the the one. <sighs> I mean, it all falls in the same thing with everybody that we're not... You could apply this to every folk. Like, every mm-hmm. like a, a white girl who's blonde is not Becky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though you might apply that, it's not like Becky. And uh, a black girl is not, you know, whatever. Right. So, you know, realizing that... You can't judge a book by its color. Exactly. And you oh, know, you know the, that was deep. Oh, what, 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 I love oh, that. Thank you. To me, it was. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's just one of those things where you that people just make so many assumptions, and especially just from my experience in the industry, where you know it's almost like Noah's Ark. Sometimes it's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, we need one black female, and we need one black male, and it's like I can't speak on every black issue Mm -hmm. so you know for you to to put that all on me is not it's it's not fair right and then also to assume that and not realize that my experience being from canada of west indian descent descent is totally different from being Mm african-american growing up in new york louisiana miami like there's everybody has so many different experiences that um you can't apply that to one person so if you are Again, this is more an entertainment type thing. If you mm-hmm. are, I think you should really educate yourself on the person. And then if you want that person to speak on certain issues, then let them know exactly what you want them to speak on. Yeah. So then they're better prepared versus just spewing out their opinion. I agree with that. Um, mine is just because you are, and this goes to, to any race, I guess, but just mm-hmm. because you're friends or good friends with a black person does not mean you can say the N word oh. freely. Oh my god! All right. That's uh... not even. And I'm talking about the 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 the, the private, the pri- the silent. Oh. Uh, you know? I mean, here's it, my take on that. If if you feel comfortable saying it at the at the cookout, then by all means. Yeah. But if yeah. you feel like that's that should be the rule of thumb. Mm-hmm. If you feel like you can't say it at the cookout, then you shouldn't be saying it at right, all. Right. Right. But I mean, it's it's also a different world. We have a lot of teenagers who are saying it. Just it is, and it is. It's like where where do you draw the line? Because it's in music, mm-hmm. and it's in like really, it's in their popular songs, right. and they're they're singing along. And they, right. it's like, uh, do you remember when that? I forgot who the artist was, but uh, this one girl came up on stage. Yes, yes. and uh, she started singing Kendrick Lamar. It. Yeah, yeah, and you know. I, people were torn because right. you know one like why is she saying that word but at the same time why would you bring her up on the stage 
sing, you know, with that song. So it, it's torn and you have I to mean, find yeah, a good I mean, yeah, Kanye says he doesn't have a problem with it. So, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it depends. And I think the, that that particular marker is moving every day. So mm-hmm. um, I, I think... It's just one of those things, which, whatever your personal uh, opinion is. Like, for me, um, I don't, I, I don't, not necessarily I don't like the word African American, but to me, it's just like, uh, when you, it's the tone you say it. Right. And if you say it a certain way, then it just makes me very <laughs> cringy. Um, but it's just, it, for, I, I let it be known for me, it doesn't work. Yeah. But I'm also not going to fight you on it. Right. Like, if you say it and then, you know, Pookie and them beat you up, then that's not my problem. Hey, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I, I just kind of, that, that's my, that's my rule of thumb. I just, I don't, I don't like the word, I don't appreciate the word, I don't, the, the fact yeah. that you can say it in my presence, think, and knowing me and knowing of me, it makes me feel like you don't have respect for me at all. Yeah. No, so. I agree. I agree with that. All right. That's all loaded. It's that's now time for uh, predictions. Oh, yeah, predictions. What do you think is going to happen in these next couple of episodes? <laughs> oh, you know, we didn't talk about Dante. That's right. Um, Let's, uh, let's talk about him real quick. I love his character. Yeah, we were, well, I was telling you, he's like one of my favorite yeah. characters this season. He, he almost seems like he would be a good narrator, like if he started in the season and narrated throughout the season. Um, but I love his character. I hope to see more of his, his character and his origin story, mm-hmm. as well as the, um, what's the name of the, um, the house that they're in? The pie? No pie. The no pie. No pie house. Yeah. No pie house. Like, I want to see more of those characters. Yeah. Or it might be a spinoff, excuse me, um, which would be interesting. How cool would that be? Um, uh, whew. Well, I see Sam is going to uh, meet up with uh, that Frey chick. I forgot her name. But she's Cynthia Frey. I think Sam's gonna meet oh, up yeah, with her. The, she wants to her to be her her um, mentor. Yeah, her mentor. Uh, I think Sam's gonna meet up with her. Um, I think Brooke and Kelsey are going to attempt it, but realize it's just not worth it. Um, mm-hmm. I think Gabe is gonna break down under pressure because another thing that they haven't dealt with. Well, I think they dealt with that over the last two seasons as far as PTSD, but mental Ill- illness. So, and then the pressure, like, he either break down under pressure or he might start taking, like, Adderall or something to yeah. keep him up. Yeah, And that might be an issue in itself. So, um, I think Gabe is going to break down under all this pressure because he's going to realize that, you know, you do need sleep mm-hmm. some some way, point, yeah. some point or another. Um, I think L- Lionel is probably going to hold it up a little bit more and then maybe find um, his true love or realize that both those options are not for him at the moment. Right. So he just might take a break and just do Lino. Well, speaking of Lino, mm-hmm. I think what's going to happen is Lino is going to find someone, and I have a feeling it's going to be Dante. No. When, you don't think it will be Dante? Mm. Like, they're putting, like... I, yeah, I, but Dante I, is almost like his fairy godfather. I don't know. Like, I see... Because Lino is still searching right. for that someone. He doesn't really have a type. You know, right? But it just seems like Dante is just so much. It's one of those. It's like those people that you meet in life and in college where they just become your 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 mentor mm-hmm. because they've been through it. But wasn't that kind of the relationship? And I want to say Wesley? it was. Yeah, he was kind the of the boyfriend. His mentor, yeah. No, Wesley was on his level, but Wesley Wesley is just more experienced sexually. Okay. And then Wesley wanted to like be with Lionel, but also be with other people and just be whatever. And Lionel wanted to be in a relationship because that was his first relationship. Right. Dante just to me, Dante just seems like that person, like that cool person that you meet, who's older, who's more experienced, who gives you advice, mm-hmm. and you have like respect like, respect for them because they're let he's let he's letting Lionel into. Um, the no pie house like he's yeah. introducing Lionel to these people like he's just it's one of those things where if it does happen it might happen later on like mm-hmm. in another season yeah but I don't foresee it having happening now I think Dante looks at Lionel as like a little brother I don't know we'll have to see we will have to see <laughs> that is all the time we have for today thank you guys so much for joining us I'm your host Benny Adams and you can find me all over social media at Benny J. Adams. And my name is TK Trinidad. You can find me on everything at TK Trinidad. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Ciao.
Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.